Welcome to a medieval 2, AI only campaign but with yet another twist. I've sent out many community polls lately, where people can vote on their favourite faction in the game. The winner of that overall was Byzantium, and so today I am going to give Byzantium 12,000 gold a turn every turn until the end of the game. That is a lot of money. In second came England, so they are getting 8k gold per turn through the King's Purse system. Now, to give you a rough idea of how it is meant to be, it's usually around 2k gold. So England is getting 4 times the gold bonus, which will help them a lot in the early game as it will set them apart, but late game, I don't know, because money becomes less important by that point, or you could say, easier to access, so the gold bonus there wouldn't really mean all too much. However, there's five factions here that were at the bottom of the list every single time, Milan, Hungary, Spain, Portugal and the Moors. Basically, it seems everyone hates Iberia, which is weird as it's one of my favourite parts of the map in the game, but oh well. Anyway, they get zero gold per turn from the King's Purse. That is nothing. So, those five powers are going to be economically devastated, at least in the early game, and I want to see how it all plays out. To what extent does the AI play fair with money, or is it all cheating? Let's take a look. The first settlements have been taken. Venice taking Zagreb, Sicily taking Tunis. And uh, by the way, just to uh, prove that yes, this gold is here and impacting the campaign, look at Byzantium there. They already have over 40k in the bank, doing nothing. England in second, Venice in third, and yeah, Denmark in fourth. And there is production if you wanted an alternate view of it, so it is impacting the game so far. Hungary taking Bucharest, but they lost that Sophia. That's not good because they are a super poor faction, you can see it, they've got hardly any troops, they're struggling. Whereas Byzantium already got a full stack there, taking Durazo, they're looking another full army there, they're looking much better. Although well done to Milan, uh, forgot to mention this, taking Dijon there, and that's good for them. The zero bonus income factions need to have the strongest start possible if they are to survive. Whereas Byzantium, England, they've got loads of money anyway, so they can actually afford to be a little slower. Scotland taking Dublin in 11 turns. That's pretty quick. Oh, well done Byzantium. Getting Trebizond there. And the first diplomacy coming through Byzantium at war with Venice, but Venice also fighting Milan. I don't know if that is good for Venice or not. Like, they're probably going to lose these two regions here, but taking Milan out very early, it's basically free territory right now because they cannot afford new troops. And uh, just to have another look at finances here, England has 80k in the bank. Byzantium over 100k. This is average, the factions down here, so it just goes to show it is helping them. But can they allocate these resources correctly? That's what makes this so interesting in my opinion. We get to learn so much about the AI. Oh, they're about to have a massive bridge battle here. Be careful Venice, don't fall for it, I think Milan won that. And now pushing on Florence. God is not happy. <laughs> Incredible move, Scotland. They never saw it coming. Instead of just walking to York, they got a boat and sailed around to it. They never saw it coming. That's some Hannibal level strategies there. <laughs> 
Oh, well done, Venice. Taking Durazo. Maybe Byzantium cannot allocate resources correctly. Uh, Milan taking Florence. They're actually doing really well, all things considered, and Hungary getting some alliances there. And of course, nothing's happening in Iberia. Okay, getting a truce and an alliance with Hungary. Uh, defending their borders, but it's a shame about the loss of Durazo. I'm assuming that means they're more interested in the Middle East, for now. Yeah, they're going down to Smiler here. Wow, everyone wants to be friends with Hungary right now. Uh, Milan uh, getting an alliance and getting a truce with Venice as well, uh, which might just keep them alive. Yep, they got Smiley. Oh, alliance is falling apart, they signed too many and now some old friends aren't happy. Milan and Venice back at war. But Milan and Byzantium get in an alliance. Could Byzantium be about to hop in and attack Venice again? Hold on. Venice was an ally with Hungary. So I think those two ceasefires came through because both of these powers wanted to ally Hungary and then each other. Oh, it was like a weird strategic ceasefire to then realign the alliances. And yep, they're back at war. <laughs> what a weird move. Oh, the Moors and the Spanish at war. Someone needs to dominate in Iberia quick. Otherwise, it's only going to get conquered by... I was about to say France, but France don't move for the first hundred turns. Uh, maybe Sicily? Maybe England? One of them. Yep, Sicily at war with the Moors going for Algiers. That's a thing I didn't think about, because if you're bordering a poor faction, then that gives you an advantage. Hmm, interesting. Venice, oh, Venice did push for Milan but got defeated, although it's far easier for Venice to replenish their troops than it is for Milan. Oh, Hungary's hopped into, yeah, it was a strategic realignment of the alliances. Hungary should take Zagreb there, and they need that, as they have Zero Bonus Gold. Milan getting an alliance with the HRE, is the HRE also hopping onto the Let's Kill Venice train? I hope so. A jihad has been called for Constantinople. Oh, now that is not good for Byzantium, especially if the Turks join it, because the Turks do start with 4k bonus income, along with Venice and Denmark, so they have their own, like, slight bonuses. Okay, it's 10 turns later and nobody actually joined, no one dared join, which I found interesting, but Hungary lost its capital we're starting to see the effects of having zero income. They cannot really afford a good defence and so lost that to Venice. Uh, meanwhile, Sicily also went to war with Venice and took the rebel settlement of Rome. But Milan also then went to war against Sicily. And what's just happened now? The Moors took Leon, Castile, Spain, down to their final settlement. Although, they should hopefully be okay. Yep, they're okay. Portugal hopping on against Spain. But I think most importantly, England versus Scotland. Scotland got Wales somehow. England, despite being the second best faction economically, not really doing that much, especially compared to Scotland, but they're starting to make their moves now. Uh, can we see any signs of... Byzantium being super wealthy. Uh, they've got some boats there. They've actually got a decent fleet overall, if you add it up, yeah. Alright, their fleet is okay. Some more ships there. Some even more ships there. Okay, they've got like, in total, if you add it all up, about a 20 stack of boats. And I think it failed yet. No one joined. <laughs> Sicily did take Algiers which is good for them, maybe a foothold to invade Iberia. England pulling back off Wales. 
wonder why that is. They have the troops, they should be okay here, but the AI acting so weirdly. Oh, well done, Hungary. Take him back, Budapest. Spain becoming a vassal of Portugal there. Wow. And yep, I knew it was only a matter of time. The HRE has gone to war against Venice. I'm surprised Venice is still going. They're at war with five different powers. Oh, oh, big army pushing onto Venice there. How can Milan possibly afford that army? <laughs> I've got to check the finances out here. Like, look how much gold they've got. That's the problem. They're not spending their money, they're just saving it. That's over a quarter of a million on both England and Byzantium. And Milan down here at what I'm assuming is maybe 1,000 maximum. Although Venice did hold out there. If we look at it from production, they are always building something. Which means the money bonus might actually help them instead in the mid game, as their troops will get better, perhaps. Oh no, York has fallen. Nice attempt at a blockade though. <laughs> Just need to move one tile further south though. Oh, but that is sad. Hungary took Zagreb. Surely, you've had it under siege about five times now. Surely you can take, there we go, the Doritos have fallen. Venice under siege again, they've held out once before. Surely they can do it again. Yep, they did. How is this happening? England, you get 8k gold per turn for doing nothing. Whereas Scotland is stuck with their usual 2k. Come on! <laughs> ah, they've finally taken Reneva. You know what, for England, I think it might be best if they did lose Nottingham and just became a mainland European power instead. Focus down here against France. That might just work out easier for them. They're not going to retake London. They're not going to do it. They don't have the numbers. They are just wasting their time here. France and England at war. That's what they should have done from the start. Oh, Rene under siege. Come on, England. I want to see you win this. The army went rebel. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> France getting an alliance with Denmark and Byzantium. <gasps> when did... Oh, that just happened now. Venice snuck on past and took Milan. Okay, so what I'm assuming then is Venice has a 4k gold bonus. So I'm assuming they got the better buildings and serve the better troops. So although they don't have the numbers compared to what Milan had, I think they have the quality. Mars took Sardinia. Didn't see that coming. It might be more that these wealthier factions grow more quality rather than quantity, perhaps. Byzantium and Sicily at war. Yeah, they're after the Doritos. My neighbours are probably wondering, what's he on about? Why is Sicily after Byzantium's Doritos? <laughs> Oh, oh, well done England, well done, taking back York and London. It might not be over for them after all. Uh, the Mongols have arrived, and by the way, it's just plain vanilla Mongols. I've not modded them in any way. Look at the fleets of Byzantium here. Beautiful. Oh, Massive fleets. That's what I like to see. Are they going to take Reducer? They should do it. Yep, they took it. Well done, Byzantium. England besieging Bruges now. I are they starting to kick it off now? Turks and Egypt at war. Not the time to go to war. Now that the Mongols are here, but they should take Adana. Yeah, they got it. And a Jihad again for Constantinople. Poor Byzantium. The Mongols go into war against the Turks. Egypt and the Moors join the Jihad. It's all kicking off here. Mosul under siege. And Adana did of course fall. England took Paris out of nowhere. That went rebel. 
Oh, well done, England. Lost Reneva. Yeah, I think that's what they do. They've got to be focusing on quality in the early game, and then they start having the advantage. About to take Rhymes and Angers. Taking Rhymes there, that's good for them. They now border the HRE. This Danish army has been here for like the last 50 turns. I really don't know what they're doing. Angers has fallen too. Oh, poor France. I think France is done. Although serves them right for being such a dumb AI. The Jihad army slowly pushing to Constantinople. And they settled Antioch. Good for them. Ah, oh, and Milan took Rome from Sicily. Big war in the north. Denmark attacking the HRE. Putting Frankfurt under siege. Is this army now going to do something? Nah, I doubt it. Frankfurt has fallen. The Mongol Empire starting to rise up. Can they take Adana and Accra? They should be able to. Yeah, Adana anyway. The Mongols looking good. And the Moors in Bordeaux. I didn't expect that one. Especially given that they don't border it, like, connected to their main homeland, so it is a weird move. There's something you don't see every day, and the Jihad army of Egypt has arrived. What are they going to do? Will it work? Will it be successful? Nope, they're off back home. <laughs> Come on, Egypt. A actually, I want to see Byzantium and England win, because then that means... Money does actually really impact the campaign and the AI. So, I do want to see them do well, but I think they're going to lose it. Whoa. Milan going to war against Byzantium. Everyone broke their alliances. Milan took Naples and... No way. <laughs> He's collapsing in shock. I think Byzantium beat the army. They've got a huge stone wall. It's definitely been battered. So they did attack. I think they won it. Wow, that is weird. It just goes to show then what the extra investment has done. Maybe they've got a blacksmith and like the best troops possible over most advanced military buildings and all that. That's what I'm assuming and it just boosted their odds to the point where they have to win. Yep, one turn later, no Egyptian army, so they didn't retreat into the trees and hid. They got stack white. Oh, and Byzantium taking Crete as well from Venice. That's good. Pushing for Venice itself now as well. Denmark taking Nuremberg. Hold well on, who's becoming a vassal of who? Venice, a vassal of Milan. Wow. And uh, Scotland and the Moors got an alliance there. What a weird friendship. <laughs> and who's attacking Valencia? Sicily? Well done, Sicily. Go for it. Oh, no, never mind. Poland at war with Denmark and Denmark looking pretty good here. They wiped out the HRE, which is really impressive when you think about it. Did it fail? Yep, it failed. Ah, oh, poor Egypt and poor Moors too, who now have to walk all the way back home, wherever they are. England, what are you doing? They've taken Edinburgh, but they've lost Khan, about to lose Angers. It's so historically accurate. They're either winning in Britain and getting slaughtered in mainland Europe or vice versa. <laughs> We're at turn 100 now. I'm curious to see how wealthy they are. Uh, get the Aztecs out of there. Alright, it's dipping. I'm assuming that means, I'm hoping that means, they're now investing. But Byzantium reached a peak at 280,000 gold. In the bank, doing nothing. England currently leading on Byzantium. Going down pretty quick, Venice. Shot right down there. That's not good. Russia hopping on against Denmark as well. Massive Portuguese army outside Canfor. 
whatever reason. HRE took back Mets 2 and the Mongol Empire. Looking really good here in the Middle East. They're a really big power. And what is this massive French fleet doing in the Adriatic? They don't have many settlements. They are dying here, they are losing the campaign. So why invest in such a big fleet to have all the way over here? It makes no sense. <laughs> By the way, 113 turns in. No one has died yet. England took Dublin, didn't see that. Well done to them, and taking Inverness too. Scotland down to their final settlement. I had to open my big mouth, didn't I, about no one dying. <laughs> Scotland could be about to go. They've got the armies. They should be okay, unless England is... Super unstoppable on the battlefield. Yep, they're super unstoppable. They annihilated the army. It's under siege and surely they've got to take it. Another jihad. You're not really trying again for constant. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and the Mongols joined it too this time. <laughs> of course they would. Oh, Scotland held out. Well done, Scotland. The Turks joining it too. Come on Byzantium, can you survive a third wave of it? Surely you can. That's a good take by Poland there. Taking Hamburg, cutting them off from these four settlements here. And the HRE pushing too, trying to reclaim Frankfurt. Portugal at war against Scotland. They're not seriously going to kill them are they? That's a little cruel. No, they pulled off. Why did Denmark, how did Denmark take Krakow? Yep, there is technically a border, so yes, they could do it. Okay, that does make sense. But still, an impressive feat. Oh, well done, Turks. Taking Trebizond and Edessa on the same turn, but I don't think this is what you're meant to be doing with these armies here. I think they're meant to be going for Constantinople, uh, but I think overall the Mongols might get there first. But we've seen Constantinople hold out against worse odds, so they might be okay. Milan rose up in revolt from Venice. They should retake that, but did not see that coming. Another army arriving. Okay, now that might be a little too much for Byzantium to deal with. Here we go, the Mongols going for it. Egypt joining in too. Uh, the overall war, not the actual battle. Can they take it? It's under siege. Byzantium? I'd say they're outnumbered 2 to 1 overall. But we've seen how they fight. Oh, Sicily actually took Valencia. I called it right near the start. I said they're probably going to get involved in Iberia. And yes, they have. A little later than I thought they would, though. Come on, France. That's... That's a bit cruel. <laughs> Blocking the path. And Scotland is dead. Faction destroyed. Ah, oh, poor Scotland. But did Constantinople fall? No, it didn't. And I think, I think that was the guy from before. So they defeated the army and forced it to retreat. But they did not fight the second army. Milan going to war with Byzantium too. Enemies on all fronts, but they're actually holding out much better than they would in any other campaign. The Moors attacking from the north. No clue why they're coming from this side, but they should get there in a couple of turns. Yep, they're now here. Reinforcements now here after recruiting some mercenaries. More reinforcements, another full stack. A Turkish army reinforcing. Surely it's got to go. They cannot ha hold- oh. Maybe they can. <laughs> There's still more reinforcements to come, but they obliterated that Mongol army. They're fighting so well. There's so many more, the trail just keeps on going. Who's gonna give it a go this time? Or does no one dare? No one's daring yet. I think the Turks got defeated there. Or maybe they- I think they got defeated and forced to back or something like that happened. Could have been the army. Another Mongol army got defeated. And the plague is attacking too. And 
Hold on a minute. How is there a Mongol ship in the Byzantine port? That makes no sense. <laughs> How does that even happen? That's a bug. Uh, Venice becoming a vassal of Byzantium with their final settlement. Uh, that's basically it. The whole world is paying attention to this right now. The Turks attacking Nicaea, but I'm starting to think Byzantium could hold out here. I think they defeated that Moorish army. They defeated the Turks at Nicaea. I think the Mongols took another loss at Constantinople. I think they might actually hold out at this rate. Egypt, oh, they're down to their final settlement. They did lose Cairo. So many jihad armies and a Turkish army at Smiley, but again, I think Byzantium, they've got this. They lost Smiley. They didn't have really any troops there. But in Constantinople, they are holding out. Held out again at Nicaea. Ah, oh, just abandon it at this point. Let them keep Constantinople. A Mongol army arriving by sea now? <laughs> okay, it's under siege. I think this is the final big push by the Mongols here to try and take it. They've got another full stack of Turks nearby, but... I really don't think it's going to be enough. Oh, Poland took Aarhus from Denmark. Ah, come on Constantinople, you can hold that. Right, the Turks now have it under siege, I... Did they battle? I'm, I'm unsure, I think they actually just pulled back. Weird AI doing weird stuff. Nicaea did ultimately fall, but... But Constantinople held out against the Turks there. The Turks look really good, but they just cannot take the city. Russia now going to war against Byzantium too, just to add on to the pressure here. Uh, Byzantium boat inside a Mongol boat. I've never seen that one before either. <laughs> That's weird. I like it though. Byzantium out of nowhere, expanding and taking Kiev and the Timurid survived as well. Uh, okay, I don't know why they took it, I don't know why they even went for it, but they did. And they're still holding on at Constantinople, by the way. I'm not even covering it anymore, it's just win after win. It is under siege again, tiny army, but yeah, they just obliterated them. I didn't know that just giving them that extra gold would lead to so much power. It's not that it makes them dominant, really, but it's more that it just really helps them to survive. That's what I'm noticing here. And now Egypt has finally arrived. Just go back home, Egypt. You don't want to get involved. Uh, Poland took Antwerp, France took Bruges, and they now border each other. Massive English armies here. Uh, France should probably retake Paris, but I want to see if Egypt can do it. But I doubt it. They're going to get destroyed. They've got the Mongols here as reinforcements. That's two full stack armies, but I don't think it's going to be enough. We've seen what Byzantium can do. <gasps> Egypt was able to do it after all that chaos. Egypt was able to do it, and now Byzantium in quite a tough spot. They've got a lot of money. Money's not going to be an issue, but it's how they invest it that matters. Portugal going for Khan with two units, of course they are. Also, I want to point out, uh, for factions that started off with zero gold bonus, Hungary hardly done anything since taking Zagreb. Spain, not really doing anything apart from taking a rebel settlement. Portugal, doing nothing. The Moors, they've taken some rebel settlements, they took Leon, uh, but that was also from another really weak power. Apart from that, you know, they haven't done that much. Compared to other powers who have been battling each other and swapping land and all that since the start, they have been really slow, but somehow Milan, despite being in the same category, Wiped out Sicily, near enough. They're putting up a good fight. So it seems having zero gold bonus doesn't affect them too much. There is a chance they can uh, break out of it, but it does really, really limit them in the early to mid game. 
and a quick look here at the finances because I am curious and they've really gone down. Yeah, look at that. Let's get the two richest in here, so they're basically at the same, but they did reach a debt point at around turn 129. Coming up a little bit, but they just don't have the money. Let's compare that to Milan. Alright, they're still richer than Milan. Poorer than Venice, but Venice don't have really that much to spend money on. Uh, the Timurids settled Kiev, and Egypt still holding out in Constantinople which is a serious blow for Byzantium. By the way, short victory objectives. 180 turns in, and I don't think anybody is close to winning this. I think overall what it has done is it has really slowed down the AI, which is a bit eh, disappointing. England took back Bruges, oh, alright. They've actually shipped troops across now, two full stack armies there, attacking Khan. Could this be the comeback? I hope so. Of uh, Portugal, uh, slowing them down a bit keeps attacking them. Be funny if they would sneak in now and take Edinburgh. Ah, here we go, okay. Again, why is it when I say something, something's going to happen about it? I'm like a sidekick. England took Khan. What are their objective? It is to destroy Scotland and France, and hold 15 settlements. They are currently on 11, from my count, so if they take these four here, and destroy France, they'll win it, but I think Venice is going to go for Marseille. Oh, never mind, they lost. And Egypt, making a nice comeback there, taking Cairo, now taking Dongola, pushing on Gaza, could this be it? Could this be the fall of the Mongol Empire? Holding Constantinople too, the Timurids not doing much. Alright, I think they're focusing more on the Turks. Going for Sarkel. Oh, Venice. Taking back Ragusa. Yeah, Byzantium. Definitely entering a period of decay now. Which is sad to see. They're put up such a good fight too. Don't tell me this is for Constantinople. <laughs> it can't be, it can't be. Uh, Thessalonica, again, poor Byzantium. Ah, <laughs> oh, rip. That's not gonna be good. The Mongols already going for it. Oh, the Timurids, already there. And they took Thessalonica, uh, taking Sarkel as well. I uh, did not see that one coming. Uh, splitting Byzantium in two here. Of course, you have to remember they still have their islands, so they're doing okay, but yeah, still a massive saviour setback for them, and I don't think at this stage of the game, any money is going to bring Byzantium back into the game. Wow, that I did not expect to see. Egypt expanding over here, taking Sophia, they took Gaza too, although the Mongols should retake that one. The HIV going for Milan after declaring war on Venice. And England again doing nothing. They have weird spurts of energy and then they just die. It's sad to see. Again, I think we're going through a weird spurt phase here. Are they going to take Angers? They should do. Come on, England. Don't mess it up. There we go. Although I thought they'd push on to Venice straight after, but... Nope, never mind. Just take even longer, England. I don't mind. Milan at war with the Timurids for God knows why. <laughs> why? <laughs> no one gains out of that. Oh, the holy city of Corniff under siege by Milan. No, don't take it. Okay, phew, it held out. Corniff will never fall. Uh, the Timurids and I think the Mongols. Uh, both carving up the Turks. They could actually be the next faction to die here, if they keep going for it. Or maybe actually I didn't realise that. Venice down to their final settlement. Nope. Oh, about to be possibly. The HRE took Venice itself. Ragusa under siege. Milan under siege. They held out in Milan and in Ragusa. Well done, Venice. England take Rene. Their two settlements and the destruction of France 
away from victory. Surely they should do it. No one else is anywhere close. Maybe Poland, but even that's a push. It's weird how, looking at the map here, apart from England, really, everybody is in a weak spot. Like, there is no powerful faction, really. You could say Poland, but they've lost Krakow to Denmark and they can't take it back. I guess you could argue the Moors, but they look split up. Milan, they don't even hold Milan itself. The HRE, like, they haven't really changed from their original starting borders. Okay, the Mongols, but the Horde factions don't count. Yeah, I find it just weird how everyone's either done nothing or is somehow looking incredibly weak. Apart from England, there is no big dominant power and even England itself is not doing that great. <laughs> Alright, let me take a wild bet. It's for Byzantium. Uh, Bran. Alright, now if we're going for the Hungarians this time, why go for Bran? Like, <laughs> I think Iberia would make more sense, but eh, go for it. Okay, Poland, I'd say, starting to become a serious power now. Uh, taking Oslo. It does look good, but I feel they still need Krakow to really cement their position. This map is the most border guard faction map I think we've ever had in an AI only campaign. It looks awful. <laughs> oh, end of the game. Yep, we'll keep playing. Usually someone has won at this point. And there we go, the Egyptians defeated the Hungarian army and the Timurids completed the Jihad, adding even more problems to the border guard. Like, look at that map. It's so ugly, and it just keeps getting worse. Oh, England and Poland at war. Uh, that might be okay for England. That way, you know, they still have to destroy France, but at least then they're definitely going to get over the settlement limit. Unless they lose, of course, but I don't see that happening at this point. Yep, they took Antwerp already. But someone has to kill France. Oh, faction destroyed. Who is that? Oh, Venice. They regicided. All family members dead. Rip Venice. England taking Hamburg now. Wow. They're going through it fast. Again, not helping with a border guard, really. <laughs> oh, they're so annoying. England going for Magdeburg. They should take that, probably. Nope. But they've got reinforcements. They're okay. There we go, just a few years later it fell. Aarhus is under siege too, pushing now on Stettin. This is the fall of Poland. Yep, Aarhus has gone, but it all means nothing because they still need to kill France. That's what they need at this point, that's it. Ooh, Byzantium taking back Thessalonica. Well done to them. Uh, Budapest fell to the Timurids. Hungary down to their final two settlements. Hungary becoming a vassal of Egypt. Wow. Russia at war with England too? I don't know what that's going to really lead to. England taking Riga perhaps? That would be interesting. And also credit to Egypt too for making this wild comeback here. Going all the way up to Aleppo and soon to be Antioch. There we go. Turks going for Adana now. This is the fall of the Mongol Empire. Although I think they'll survive until the end. Uh, Breslau now under siege. And Poland just got completely carved up there. The HRE pushing for Prague. England take Breslau. But let's take a look at France and nope. France is still alive. Wait, hold on a minute. England have them as a vassal. You know what, surely game, you should just give it to them at that point. Come on. <laughs> but surely vassalizing counts as destroying. It does count towards the settlement count. Surely. Surely just give them the win. Ah, oh, poo. <laughs> I'll go to turn 300 and see what it's like then. And well done England taking Prague. Obliterating the polls there and they're still going for it. 
why have a Danish army there? <laughs> Uh, a jihad has been called for Lisbon. Finally, some action in Iberia, possibly. Portugal, finally pushed into the game. They have done nothing so far, apart from a few raids against Wales and Tan. Apart from that, this is... <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Egypt took Adana, cutting off the Mongol Empire. That's a good move. The Mongols go into war against France. Again. Why? <laughs> Maybe they had to push an army out of the way. Just to kill France while you're at it. It's not that difficult, please. Come on. Come on, Mongols. Nope, never mind. England took Stockholm. Yeah, surely they're gonna win it at this point. They're, they're the wealthiest faction, they've got the most land. They're even pushing on Toledo now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, free land, I guess. Just go for it. They took Oslo to Poland down to their final settlement. Wow. Uh, Milan getting involved in the Balklands now, taking Ragusa, Doritos and Zagreb. Toledo's still under siege. Uh, I think they could actually really take this here, and then it would truly be the weirdest looking map we've ever had without a doubt. The border gore has been insane. Final turn to starve it out. What are they going to do? They took it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The border gore. <laughs> It's so weird. And Spain died, they just regicided. Right there. Hungary down to their final settlement. The Mongols down to their final too, but they'll come back as a horde. The Jihad not arriving yet. Uh, actually, Portugal going on the offensive now. Going for Cordoba. And meanwhile, France still alive. <laughs> Milan looking kind of good in the Balklands. What do they need to win? I think they have to destroy Venice and Sicily and hold 15 settlements. I count 10 settlements, so they're still far away, but they are the second closest faction, in my opinion. Imagine if they beat England to it. That would be crazy. The Mongols now are hard yet again. Somewhere around here. Hold on a minute, where are they? Am I just of oh, there they are. They blend in so well. Uh, Alright, that's hardly anything. Come on, Egypt. You can beat them with the assassins alone here. Just get them gone. Don't give them the chance to make the comeback. You can do it, Egypt. Oh, really? You're gonna do that to the Border Gore Turks? You're gonna take Tbilisi, cutting off Yerevan? Of course you are. And Hungary making the comeback too? That does not help. Oh, it's such an ugly map. Hey, they finally did it. Egypt took Lisbon. Portugal down to their final settlement. And England taking Zaragoza. I think Egypt... Surely they have the settlement count. They just have to destroy the Turks, I think. So they... Yeah, I'd say they're actually a big power now. Kind of close. England, Milan and Egypt. I would say are in that category. Oh, and uh, it was the Moors who discovered the new world. There's something you don't see every day. Oh yes, yeah, smart move. Drop off a merchant and leave him there. Like, how's the merchant going to get any of the gold back home? <laughs> Just a weird game feature when you really think about it. Poland taking Vilnius and England taking Fawn. But again, you gotta kill France. <laughs> uh, Portugal, wow, taking Bordeaux, uh, but about to lose Pamplona. Ah oh. oh, no, they held on at Pamplona. Well done, Portugal. Wow, England really cutting through now, taking Vilnius and Kiev. They did lose Stockholm, but so what? Arriving now outside Helsinki too. But anyway, there we go. We are now at turn 300. And the reason I decided to end it here and not go to see the full short victory is because in my eyes, they've already won it. Like, they've got the settlement count for certain. All they have to do is kill France, but they've vassalised France. 
Now, in my opinion, vassalization is as good as destroying them. I'm going to count that as a win, so well done England, they got the win, but who came second and who came third? Also, Egypt has to kill the Turks, and they're not even at war with the Turks, so that's going to take even longer. Milan, I don't even know what they've got to do, but they've stopped at this point. They don't really have the money. They might take Thessalonica and Corn if okay. Those could be some easy settlements, but still then, they've still got a long way to go. But anyway, let's take a look at the stats. Let's get in the top five factions. England won, Egypt in second. I can agree with that. Milan in third, HRE in fourth, Byzantium in fifth. I agree. Although it's weird, given how small Byzantium is, that they still rank so highly. I'm assuming that's more because of their gold. Uh, military there, Egypt actually has a bigger military. Interesting. Production there, uh, territory there, yeah, clearly England is winning it. And England is the only one still rapidly expanding too. They've all stalled out a bit, but England still going up. Uh, Byzantium ended... Oh, they almost beat their original record of, I think, 280k gold in the bank. And then population there. So what does the gold do? Not as much as I thought it would, I think. I think looking at this, I can say that AI almost definitely does have gold cheats. Or is absolutely terrible at using their bonus gold reserves. I think both are probably true there. Although, having extra gold, I've found, does help keep them alive. Like, England and Byzantium both were at very difficult spots, but were able to push through. England at one point just had Cannes and Nottingham, Scotland had taken the rest, but they were able to pull it back, and I think that's where the gold comes in handy. Even if you have a few amount of settlements, you're still making a lot of money and so that allows them to survive a bit longer. Having zero gold doesn't, um, of course, bonus gold per turn, I mean, uh, through the King's Purse, uh, they still make money. Uh, but having that at zero, you know, as we can see, Hungary did not do well. Portugal did not do well. Spain is dead. The Moors did not do well. It's a miracle they survived, really. But Milan actually did okay. But you can tell it was a weaker Milan compared to what we're used to. So anyway, that's my little conclusion there on the gold and how it affects the AI. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. Share with anyone you think may be interested. And leave a like on the video too. Comment down below any other weird wacky ideas you might have for these AI only campaigns. I'm happy to continue them as long as people are willing to watch and as long as I still have ideas. Anyway, I have been Melkor, but for now, until the next one, Melgon.